like an intellectual American idol or something. Uh, and I'm glad you guys are gearing up. I like to hear this. This is the nature of this thing. Uh, well, now we'll open it up for a couple questions. You can address it to anybody. And by questions, I, I really meant to say this every year, I mean questions. I would love to know where you went to public school 50 years ago, but that's not a question. Uh, anybody have a question? Right here. Yes. I have a question for Richard. When, when he talks about fair pay. When he talks about fair pay. When he talks about fair pay. Do you consider fair pay when the president of a corporation gets a $40 million parachute and his company is going bankrupt? Do you consider that a fair form of compensation? Did you all hear the question? When a $40 million, when a CEO gets a $40 million bailout, do you consider that, and his company's going under, do you consider that fair compensation? It, it, it's, it, it doesn't have anything to do with unions. That has absolutely everything to do with corporate welfare. I believe it's fair if uh, the corporation uh, shareholders decided it was fair. I don't believe uh, it's fair if the public hasn't decided it's fair for a, pro a public sector equivalent. Uh, if a company or a corporation gets a bailout from the government, it's not fair. If they don't, then who am I to say? Yeah. Yes, sir. Come on up here. Please. I believe I heard you say that collective bargaining in the public sector promotes conflict. He believes that he heard him say that collective bargaining in the public sector promotes conflict. He did say that. I think going to work promotes conflict. He thinks going to work promotes conflict. What's the question? And I What's the question? That either you haven't gone to work or you haven't been paying attention. And he's what's the question? Either haven't been going to work or haven't been paying attention. What's the question? Yes, that's in the form of a question. No, the question's here. Oh, yeah. oh, finally. One can only hope. I spent a lot of my life negotiating contracts in the public sector. He spent a lot of his life negotiating contracts question. in the public sector. I saw them reduce conflict. What have you seen that caused an increase in conflict? What has he seen that has caused an increase in conflict? Uh, protests in Madison, uh, protests in Greece, uh, public yes, sector unions absolutely. in California, absolutely. With prison guards. Um, I see teachers here in Chicago uh, saying that they're going to strike if they don't get a scheduled automatic 4% wage increase. There it is. Uh, this lady said, hell yeah, I am. So Richard's right. Yes, ma'am. I would like to know what the debater thinks of the American Legislative Council that has branches in every single state, funded by big corporations, and they are writing the legislation in the state houses. And that's how what got passed in Madison got passed. It's the American Legislative Exchange Council. What, what does he think of the American Legislative Exchange Council? Right, that's the question. A, a legislator pays. A legislator pays. Very nominal dues to belong. Nominal dues to belong. Corporations pay upwards of $100,000. Corporations pay upwards of $100,000. And they have access to all the Republican legislators. And they have access to all the Republican legislators. So corporations are connected. I've lost track of the question, though. I'm doing an eminently good job of translating this, but I've lost track of the question. She doesn't know what it is. What do you think about the American Legislative Council? Whatever. I'm Tim Hop, Adelbrand. I think they're a uh, special interest just like the teachers union, or any union, public sector union, absolutely. As long as they don't uh, buy from legislation or buy votes, I think you want to get good ideas from any source. I don't care. It could be from the private sector unions. It could be from ALEC. As long as you have ideas coming in without being forced into uh, uh, passing them into law, I would prefer to have as many ideas as possible. Alec, 
This nice man wants to ask a question. If, if an educator is not doing a good job, what, what process is there to get rid of that ed educator? Little. Thank you for that question. Complicated. Um, that's exactly what collective bargaining brings us. Each district has its own procedures and its own ways of removing people they feel are ineffective. So it's not a streamlined process. Whenever. It's not the same everywhere. It's not... Um, out of, you know, out of some box or anything, but it's whatever works and whatever's agreed to between the, the state and, and the worker. So um, there are ways. Every Pretty much every contract, every contract that I've personally seen has had a provision for removing ineffective teachers. Do you think it's effective? Do you think it's effective? How many years does it take to get rid of a lemon is the question? About two. What do you mean by lemon? A bad teacher. Okay, let's, use, let's use actual terminology because these are people you're talking about. Um, it all depends. It, it means exactly goes back to what I said: is every contract is different. So I mean, do you think the system is effective in that though? In what? In getting rid of the bad teacher. Well, the onus now, or can it be changed through better negotiations with the unions? Not getting rid of the unions, but actually trying to tweak their system so that they that they can um, accept that to get rid of the bad teachers and maybe add better pay to the the good teachers. So my question was, do you think that the system of getting bad teachers out of the system now does it work? Is it effective? In your opinion? In my opinion, well, the onus of removing ineffective workers is on management. Is it effective? No. Answer effective? the question. Is it effective? Yes or no. Yes or no. Well, in Chicago, the the procedure is there. Is, there's. Can I, can I finish? I already see you talking. Hmm? It, 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 in Chicago. In Chicago. The onus is on and on the on management to remove ineffective, um, ineffective workers. Now, the, pro, the the issue right now is the evaluation system is based upon the whims of that principal. Now, that in and of itself is not effective. There needs to be more um, objective criteria for doing so, and that is something that can be handled through collective bargaining. But management has not taken the initiative to actually do something about that. Uh, very briefly, it's not Chicago, but in the LA public schools, it took between uh, 2000 and 2010, uh, administrators were trying to get rid of seven teachers. They ended up taking 10 years to do this at a cost of $3.5 million. They only got rid of five of seven teachers. Yes, sir. Okay, yeah. My question is for um, Richard. Richard. In what year did uh, the country of Germany eliminate collective bargaining? In what year did the country of Germany eliminate collective bargaining? Countrywide. What year was Country that? Countrywide. I don't know. 1933. Does it ring a bell? 1933. Does it ring a bell? The National Social Party took over and four million Germans who were part of the party went out, got rid of every union in the country put them in prison, and they went to the death camps for anybody because they wouldn't stop yelling for the cut the bargaining rights. What did Italy do later? They copied them. History's repeating itself, bro. Thanks so much. <laughs> it seems to me that that's a problem for too powerful and too large of a government. Yes. It is so wonderful to see passions being aroused. This is what this thing's all about. And you're about to get a real sampling at four different stages. Yes, ma'am. My question is, what is the definition of a bad teacher? I hear people saying, how do you get rid of... What is, what the is, what is their... Whoever asked that question, what is your definition of a bad teacher? What is... Maybe you both could answer this. What? Is, I think that's... What is the definition of a bad teacher? Kenzo, you want to try... I, that's... It's a very complicated... I'm not... Sure, there's the. 
I had only good teachers at LaSalle School before it became a language academy. Uh, young man with the hat. Well, there are three young men with hats. Hey, then what is this new style? It's, it's, I don't get it. But... Would he, would, would, would he be okay if collective bargaining were not a private matter but opened up to the public? After a contract's been negotiated, they send it out for us to vote. But given that only less than half of us will vote in a presidential election, I certainly wouldn't trust. Not you guys, not me, but I wouldn't, that's a weird way to go, but what do you two think? We need a national day off for voting, that's why. You gotta go to work. Right. You need to have Mandatory power. voting would help. Oh, yeah. Mandatory like voting would absolutely be awful. Um, I, I would say that, in theory, that that is an okay idea, but in practice, the clout and the power that the unions have to organize at the local level for elections would probably make it that uh, it would always go in their favor. Um, I don't completely agree with that because of the fact that, you know, look at the fact that politicians that have been elected are rescinding raises left and right and trying to take away collective bargaining. I don't think unions really have a stranglehold on the voting populace. I would say that if we wanted to change direction, uh, we should leave that up to the voters. Maybe have that be a referendum. I'm going to take two more. You followed by you, sir. Yeah, you mentioned that uh, one of the problems with uh, pensions... Come on up here. Yes, sir. You had mentioned... Here? Here? Further? I'll, I'll try not to break anything. You, you had mentioned that um, the, one of the problems with pensions is they're underfunded. And yet I know here in Chicago, Cook County, and Illinois, most of the politicians who are elected are elected with public sector union support. So my question to you is, um, and the public sectors are very aggressive about making sure politicians who had opposed our bad fiscal system were not elected. So my question to you is, if you think that underfunded pensions are a problem, why have the public sector unions been supporting the politicians who caused this problem? And since you guys voted the problem into office and supported it with your volunteer work and money, why are you expecting the rest of us to fix a problem you guys paid for? Hey. Good uh, that's a good question. Uh, it's a little disingenuous, though, because both sides, both uh, corporates, corporate uh, lobbyists and, and unions both contribute money, and the, the corporate lobbyists contribute way more. So it's a little disingenuous to say that the, the unions completely elect um, these officials. And just because someone's elected doesn't mean they necessarily uh, uphold the platform they ran on. I mean, if we look, I, I, mean, I, I know we're kind of beating this to death, but in Wisconsin, uh, Governor Walker did not run on eliminating collective bargaining. Yeah, he did. That was a Trojan horse that he brought in later on. Not at all. So, I see your argument, but it actually doesn't uh, hold water in this case. One final question from this distinguished-looking gentleman here. Uh, Richard Lawrence made the statement that uh, the most powerful special interest group is the, the public workers sector, speaking of the teachers. That being so, what should we do for the poor bankers and all the bankers of special interest group? Someone said the bankers should get their own union. That would be awful. Um, I agree. No bailouts, no corporate welfare, absolutely no money to the bankers from the public sector. Richard Kinzo, thank you.